Hi everybody, Nathan Ronan, CFA here with another update. Coming up with lots of stuff here for you guys to listen to. This is particularly about the new practical skills module that applies to the level one and level two candidates in 2024 and beyond. So if you're a level three candidate, this doesn't apply to you right now. Um, and if you wanna hear more about it, what I'd ask you to do is to please press the subscribe button now and the um, notifications button so that you can continue to receive these updates on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and sometimes even more than weekly uh, depending on my mood and depending on if I have something to talk about uh, right now and you can continue to be updated on developments in the CFA curriculum. Okay, here's the question. I get this all the time. My email box gets flooded with it. My text messages. Nathan, what, what's a scoop with the uh, PSM, with the practical skills module? Can you shed some light on it? The truth is the CFA Institute has put out quite a bit of information about it already on their website and even in emails to candidates. But we all know that people don't read everything today. And we also know that people don't you know, access everything that they have. I mean, I've seen that over the years because people are just so flooded with information that they need to prioritize everything. So hopefully this video will uh, help you out and make sure that you understand the basics as well as the important stuff and the benefits of these practical skills modules. All right, so let's begin. First of all, um, is the practical skills modules a requirement? Must I do it? Yes both for level one and for level two. They will not release your exam results unless you complete the practical skills module that you've selected at your level. Done. So yes, yes you do. When do I need to do these practical skills modules? When do they begin? For the level one exam, they begin with the February 2024 exam. And for level two, they begin with the May 2024 exam, and then they continue from that point on for every exam cycle, whether it be August, November, February, or May. Nathan, where can I get access to this? Okay, I'm gonna reveal something unbelievable. It's on your learning ecosystem. So if you've registered for the exam, the practical skills module is in the CFA Institute's learning ecosystem. You can get access to it right there. Nathan, how many hours do I need for this additional requirement? First of all, this is a good question. This is a requirement in order to get your exam results released in addition to taking the actual exam. So the content of the practical skills module is not gonna be on your exam for level one or level two. It is a separate component that must be done in order to release your scores. Okay. Nathan, when do I need to do it? Should I do it when I first register? Should I do it after I take my exam? Should I do it while I'm studying? That is your personal choice. You can do the practice, you can select the practical skills module that you wanna do and complete the 10 to 15 hours of videos or material that they have for you anytime from the point that you register for the exam until after your exam date, but before the release date of your exam, which is usually six to eight weeks after you take it. So you could do it now, you could do it after your exam date, but it's gotta be below before, excuse me, before your release date of your exam. That's the key point. If you don't do it, they won't release your scores. That's it. And I would not recommend doing it the night before the exam results are released. I would do it at least a few days before the exam results are released. Okay, as I said, it's 10 to 15 hours to complete. Um, also, um, as I said before, and I can't help but repeat it, if you don't do it, whether you pass or fail the exam, your scores will not be released. That's it. Now, one, one thing is you can select the practice, practical skills module that you want at level one and level two, and you can actually switch it. As long as you complete one of the modules, before the exam release date, it's fine. So for example, if you decided level one to switch from financial modeling to Python programming, that's fine. As long as you do it before the release date of your exam. You only need to do one of the modules, that's it. 
So at level one, you have two choices. You have financial modeling and you have Python programming, okay? At level two, you have a choice of three of them. One of them is called analyst skills. The other one is called, the second one is called Python, data science and AI, artificial intelligence. And then the third one is the Python programming. And yes, the Python programming module at level two is the same as the Python programming at level one. So you can't do Python programming at level one and Python programming at level two, it's the same one. So you'll have to choose something. If you choose Python programming at level one, you'll need to select one of the others at level two. Now, what happens if you fail the exam, but you completed the uh, practical skills module, and then you have to retake the exam, you do not need to redo the uh, practical skills module. Once you've done it, that's it. One time for each level, that's it. If you wanna switch it, then you can do that, but you'd have to complete it again before the exam release date. So if you do the financial modeling and you complete it and you fail the exam at level one, you're, st you're, still having, you're still considered to have finished the financial modeling, and then you just got to restudy for level one in the next exam cycle. So you don't need to keep repeating the modules at any one particular level. Okay. Now, um, a question I also have been getting on is, what is the practical skills module? Nathan, you're talking about all this, but what is it? Basically, the CFA Institute sort of explains it, quote unquote, as hands-on modules that are actually designed to provide you as a candidate with practical, real-world application of the concepts in the CFA curriculum. Do I think that this is a good thing? Well, my, my opinion really doesn't matter too much. I'm not taking the exam. But in my, if you want my opinion, yeah, I think it's a great thing to have. Yes, it's additional work for you, but at the same time, the real world, meaning the financial services industry, wants to see you with more practical skills and not just theory coming into a startup position or coming into a role in their companies. And CFA Institute is doing a great job and is trying to evolve with the times by creating these practical skills modules that addresses the needs of the industry. So yes, it's a good thing for you to do, and I think it doesn't hurt. Is it gonna make you a professional in Python programming or a professional in financial modeling? No, but you'll get at least some raw hands-on skills that you can apply in the work world once you join the firm and show them what you got out of the CFA program at level one and level two. Okay. Also, what are the benefits, I'm asked? What are real the benefits? Do I think there are any benefits to, this, uh, to the practical skills module? And the answer is yes. First of all, in my opinion, they are a good and valuable addition, as I just mentioned, to the curriculum learning. You're not just looking at theory, but you're also getting some practice. And more importantly, it's actually bridging that gap. It's bridging the gap between theory and practice, which is what a lot of programs and certifications and accreditations don't do. So you're more ready when you enter the financial services industry or if you want to change your position or move in to another part of your company, you're going to have this theory and practice merged. And that's a very big benefit from having these practical skills modules as part of your program at level one and level two. Next question is, and I'll leave it at this, hey Nathan, how can you help me with these practical skills modules? Well, actually the practical skills module, as I said before, is a new component in the level one and level two program that you need to complete. And it's a complete relationship between you and CFA Institute. The CFA test prep providers like Chalk and Board, we cannot have videos about it. We don't have access to the practical skills modules. So we can give you some guidance. We can answer some questions for you, but we can't actually provide you with the practical skills modules ourselves. That's something that CFA Institute is holding tight with under their vest and it's between you and them, and you will do it with them, and you will get your uh, you know, approval from them. So the prep providers are limited beyond, and I'm limited beyond giving you some guidance, suggestions, answer some questions for you, but I can't actually have videos on those practical skills modules because I don't have access to them. And no, none of the prep providers do. And finally, um, Nathan, what about practical skills modules at level three? probably in 2025, 2025 CFA Institute is saying, but they haven't addressed it yet. So that's what you need to know about the practical skills modules at level one and level two. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. 
I'm happy to help you prepare for level one, level two, get you through it on the first time around. Check out my website, send me an email. My email is there, my phone number is there. You can text me, WhatsApp me at chalkandboard.org. That's C-H-A-L-K and A-N-D, board, B-O-A-R-D. That's chalkandboard.org. So good luck with your level one and level two studying. Don't forget to do these practical skills modules. Do them when you feel it's convenient for you, but before the release date of your exam. And that's a wrap. Done.